Hi there. In this section we're going to start to look at characters and strings in relation to Java programming. We're going to take a look at characters and declaring and assigning values to characters and what we would use characters for. We're going to take a look at strings which we have seen before but probably in a little more depth. We're going to look at finding the length of a string and accessing individual characters in a string. And then we're going to take a look at how strings and loops can work together to allow us to perform a number of tasks. So let's take a look at characters first. A character variable may contain any single letter, number or symbol. So it's just another variable, another data type, but here we're storing one letter or number or symbol as opposed to just numbers or just decimal numbers or whole strings. So we're just dealing with one character at a time here. To declare a character called letter, we would use the code char letter. So the keyword here is char, C-H-A-R, short for character. And that basically creates a box labeled as letter. Okay, so obviously letter here is the name that I've decided to give my character variable. It's not something specific and you can name your character variable anything that you want. To assign the letter A to that variable, we would use the code letter equals A. And what that does is it takes the A and it, put it puts it inside the letter variable. Note here that we're using only single quotes around the letter A because it's one single character, whereas when we assign values to strings, we use double quotes. So just be careful of that when you're using characters. If we look at strings then, um, we've seen strings before, okay, and we've declared strings. So for example, if we declare a string called word, we use the keyword string and then the variable name word. Now string, don't forget, always uses an uppercase S as well. So that basically creates a box for us with word in it. Okay, if we look at that in a little more detail then, let's assign the word apple to the variable. So we say word equals apple, and again you'll note here the double quotes as opposed to the single quotes we saw with the character earlier. That basically puts the word apple into the string. Now what we haven't looked at in any great detail to date is the fact that each letter in a string gets its own index. So in effect, when I put apple into word, what I'm actually getting is something that looks more like this. So each letter has its own section and is assigned its own index. And you'll note as well that the first index in a string always starts at zero. Okay, so the letter A is at index 0, P is at index 1, we have P at index 2, index 3 contains L, and index 4 contains E. Okay? There are a number of methods then available to us for using with strings. And the first one we're going to look at allows us to get the length of a string. So if we wanted to get the length of a string called word, so we have this word here, obviously looking at it I can see how many letters are in the string word but when later on if the user for example entered in a word into a into a string variable I wouldn't know how many letters are in it so we have this method that allows us to get the length of the string and so what we'll do is we'll create a variable int len which gives us a box labeled len and then we would say len equals word which is the name of my string dot length and that's going to count how many letters are in the string and assign it to my variable. So you'll see here my len is 5. Now it's worth noting my length is 5 because there are 5 letters in this particular word. A-P-P-L-E. That's 5 letters. But my last index in the string is 4. Okay, Because my index starts at 0. And that's going to be really important as we move on. So bear that in mind. The other thing we can do is we can access individual characters in a string. So suppose when we wanted to access the first letter of this word. We'll make a character variable char first, which makes our box and labels it first. And if we say first equals word dot char at zero, what we're doing is we're using the char at method, which is basically the character at, and then in the brackets we're going to put the value of the index where the letter is. So if I want the first letter, I know the first letter is always going to be at index 0. So that takes my A and assigns it to my character first. So now my first letter, A, is stored in a character variable labeled first. Similarly, I can access the last letter of the word. I mean, I can access any character in the word that I want. But in this particular example, we'll take a look at getting the last letter of the word. So we declare char last which gives us a box labeled last 
And then I say last equals word.char at len minus one. Okay? Now remembering, of course, so that's going to take my e and pop it into last. So my len in this instance is five, but I don't have an index five. So if I left this as simply len, then I would get an error because I don't have an index five in this word. But I do have len minus one, which is four. My last letter in a string is always going to be whatever the length was, minus one. So if I have seven letters in a word, it's going to be seven minus one, the last index will be six. So you have to bear that in mind, the difference between the length of a word and the last index. And that's because our index always starts at zero. Okay, so we have a couple of methods there for use with strings. Dot length gets the length of the word. Charat allows us to access a letter at a particular index or a character at a particular index. Zero will always bring us to the first character in the word and len minus one or the length minus one will always take us to the last character in the string.